ketchup today and I never thought I was somebody who liked homemade ketchup until I made it this way. It is so delicious. I've made it a few times now and love it. And I think my recipe is a little bit different for a couple reasons. Number one, it started on the stove and finished in the oven. And number two, it's a freezer recipe. This ketchup gets frozen and not canned. And so of course you'll need a lot of tomatoes to start with for this. And the best tomatoes for this job are paste tomatoes. Paste tomatoes are meatier and more substantial and they cook down into a richer, more velvety, smoother sauce, and in this case, ketchup, than say slicing tomatoes or beefsteak tomatoes. I do throw a couple heirlooms in there just for flavor, but the majority really should be paste tomatoes for this. As far as kitchen equipment goes, you'll need a big heavy bottomed pot. This is a 16 quart, which is my favorite for lots of preserving projects, and then some basics plus a blender and an enameled or glass baking pan. My preferred method for handling tomatoes for most of the things that I make and ketchup included is to leave the skins on, but to squeeze out some of the seeds and gel. I just think it makes cooking them down a lot faster and easier. And sometimes the seeds don't blend up very well and I don't really like their texture. So I get rid of them and you can see it's pretty simple. Don't pulverize the tomato, but do give it a gentle squeeze. You don't have to fuss over getting every single seed out. Not at all, but I do try to get the majority of them out. And then I'm just going to roughly chop the tomatoes into kind of large chunks and measure them out. And you will need 24 cups of roughly chopped tomatoes for this recipe, which is a lot. So get chopping. If you want the written recipe, I'll put it in the video description below so you don't have to remember it from here. And this is an important note when you're measuring the tomatoes because they're kind of in large chunks, we're not finely dicing these, push them down in the measuring cup a little bit so that you get the most accurate measurement. Load all of your tomatoes into your pot and get cooking. This is gonna take quite a while. It will take multiple hours for this to cook down. It depends a lot on how high you have it, how much liquid your tomatoes have and other things like that, but be prepared for this to take a while. Once it gets boiling, I like to stir it every 20 to 30 minutes and I use a long handled flat bottomed spatula because I can get to the bottom of this pot and I can scrape it to make sure that no tomatoes are burning on the bottom. And I'm just cooking this over low to medium heat. The goal is a gentle simmer. And while that cooks, measure out the rest of the ingredients for the ketchup. This is a very classic, very mild ketchup. It has vinegar and then granulated sugar, brown sugar, salt, celery seed, crushed red pepper, granulated onion and garlic, and the tiniest bit of cloves. I do not like a very heavily cinnamon clove spice ketchup. I like more of a classic flavor profile. Carl said it tastes like Kind's ketchup, but a more classier gourmet flavor and not as sweet. I think it's perfect for me. It turned out really good. So I like to add the vinegar and the sugar and spice mixture about an hour after the tomatoes have cooked. So when they've cooked down a little bit, but not, not fully cooked down by any means. And I just stir in the spice mixture and keep cooking it at a low to gentle simmer, stirring it every 20 minutes. Once it gets cooking a little ways, more towards the second half of cooking, I definitely stir it more like every 20 minutes. And this is after several hours of cooking. You can see how thick it looks, even though it's not blended yet, and how much it's reduced. My goal is generally to reduce it by a little bit more than half of where it started. And I think that this looks perfect. We're gonna reduce it a little bit more in the oven so you have a little bit of wiggle room here. The next step is to blend it up. And before we do this, you're gonna to wanna to let it cool. I like to let it cool quite a bit. In fact, sometimes I turn this into a two day process and I let this cool overnight, which is what I've done here. And you are gonna to wanna to blend this really, really well. Blend it quite a long time because we want to pulverize all of those skins and any seeds that are left because we will want our ketchup to be really smooth. And for the final leg of cooking, I like doing it in the oven at about 200 degrees. So I pour the puree onto a pan. I'm using an enameled pan, which is my favorite. You can also use glass. You might have to use multiple pans if you don't have a big one. You just don't want it spread too thick. I would say less than an inch is good. Otherwise it'll take too long and it will risk burning. But doing it in the oven like this on low heat is a fantastic way to concentrate it and make it have a really great, wonderful ketchup, concentrated tomato flavor, but without being burnt or um, overcooked tasting. 
This has been cooking for about an hour and I like to stir this every hour in the beginning and maybe slightly less than that, um, like every 30 to 40 minutes towards the end of cooking. So what I'm gonna do is stir it around really well and I start by pulling it away from the sides of the pan because I wanna make sure that I get all of that that's at the sides to the middle and mixed in because it cooks faster near the sides than it does in the middle. And once it's stirred up, I will redistribute it back into an even layer. Another couple hours have passed. You can see it is getting thicker and starting to look really great. This is gonna take as long as it's gonna take. It's one of those types of projects. It really depends on how hot your oven is, the size of your pan, how much liquid you left in your tomatoes, all sorts of things. All right, another couple hours. It's looking really good. Look at how thick and beautiful that is. How thick you take it is really up to you. If you want a thinner ketchup, you can stop it earlier. If you want a really thick, luscious ketchup, I think that this looks almost perfect. And I'm gonna call this done. I think it looks really good. Remember that it will thicken up more once it cools. It's looser when it's warm. And I'm gonna give this a final really good stir and then I'm gonna pack it into a bowl and put it in the fridge overnight so that it really has a chance to solidify and the flavors can meld together. And here's what it looks like after it's cooled in the fridge overnight. Isn't it so beautiful? I love how it turned out. The texture is perfect. It even developed that kind of smooth, silky glassiness as it cooled too. And it freezes beautifully. It comes out of the freezer just as good as it went in. So all I do is pack it into freezer safe jars. Those are any jars that have straight sides. And that's it. Let me know if you have questions. And if you found this video helpful, I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you're the first to know whenever a new video is posted.